Hey, this is Seymour Toys. Man, we're out here on the lake. We're on Logan Martin Lake in Alabama. And we've got little Moby here with us. He's taking a ride, enjoying the day. Uh, he's Moby, he's large and he's in charge because he's the great white dog. Hey, the reason I'm making a video today is I just kind of wanted to cover the uh, Alpha Dan situation. I kind of run across a video from the, uh, I believe it was Drive for Change uh, web channel, or a YouTube channel, I'm sorry, and it was about an, a million views on this video, and the, it was talking about they're working on this new outboard, Alpha Dan outboard, it was a 600 horsepower, it was going to be an inline four cylinder that had no counterbalancers, and the video goes in talking about counterbalancers and why you need them and things like that, but the bottom line is the Alpha Dan people are coming through. They have, I went to their website to check out the engine. It sounds kind of interesting, you know, and see what you can do because they said they had a proprietary, um, proprietary connecting rod that basically, from what I understand, it ends up keeping straight up and down and as it goes around, it has a slider that goes around. It's kind of been done before, tried before, but it's never really taken off. It's not mainstream. You don't see in the auto world, it's not mainstream. So, uh, anyways, but it sounded interesting. The video was interesting. They made it be sound better than sliced bread from what they were working on. So, I went to the website, checked it out, and they're asking for money. It's a, it's a, one of the startups, and it's 500 bucks is the minimum to buy in. You can go all the way up to $20,000 to buy in. And I kind of watched a video, and I'm like, well, this is kind of interesting. I might invest something in this. I might throw a thousand bucks at it or whatever. That's the first level you can get shares. And uh, anyways, I got to kind of thinking about it, and I'm going, I remember when Honda Marine came out with our uh, BF-115-130, it was a, uh, basically the cord engine, the block, the internals of the block that became the outboard. And when it came out, I was like, it, I saw that it had counterbalancers, twin counterbalancers. They were basically straight out of the car. And I'm like, well, why do you need these counterbalancers? It's going to slow the out of the whole performance of the engine. And do you really need them? And my boss at the time was, uh, he was a, before an engine, engine designer. Matter of fact, he was the lead designer on that engine out of the Accord uh, back in the 90s, early 90s. Um, that. Uh, they ended up using as the base design is the BF-115-130, the Honda BF-115-130. And uh, Mr. Kuno said that you got to anything over two liters or much over two liters and has to have counterbalancers to counteract the momentum of the pistons as they move away from the crankshaft. Even though you have two pistons going up and two pistons coming down, you end up having the rotational force of the weight of the pistons moves the, the, the wave, the, the vibration wave, away from the center of the crankshaft out. So what the counterbalance does is takes that little bit of wave that it doesn't, that, that the, uh, the two pistons going up and down at the same time doesn't counteract, moves that wave back to the uh, center of the crankshaft and keeps harmonic vibration down. And it's pretty much necessary. The engine will eventually rip itself apart. So anyways, these guys are saying they're going to come out with a uh, 7.5 liter, 600 horse outboard that uh, has no counterbalancers because it's got this certain crank. Well, you still got the pistons going up and down, and they're quite large pistons. So I kind of thought about this, and I looked a little more, and the algorithm recommended a channel called The Workshop, which is a gentleman, I believe his name is Matt, He's out of the UK, pretty heavy, deep British accent, uh, but you can understand him uh, as you listen to him. And he's really knowledgeable. I'll, I'll link to his videos too in the description, but he's really knowledgeable. And he went through and took different size engines, displacement engines, and took the pistons and measured them and weighed them and came up with a graph that basically gave you a center line and a baseline plus or minus of where your pistons would be as you go up to 1.8 liters per jug, which is going to be near about the size of a 7.5 liter four-cylinder engine. And just the weight of the, and the size of the pistons would be massive. And so you're talking about a lot of weight, you know, going up and down. It's got to be counteractive. But they're saying, again, they're doing it with this special proprietary connecting rod, which they don't really tell you much about. Uh, it says he got a patent on it, but that's about it. So. Uh, you know, 
The guy from uh, the Drive for Change also has an interview with uh, Alfonso, I think his name is. I'll link to that video too. Uh, that he interviews him for about 38 minutes and asks for different, different details and things like that. And the guy from the uh, the workshop channel from England goes through and kind of review, does a video in reviewing that. That that's an hour long video near about as he goes through and reviews the guy's uh, uh, what statements he's saying. And kind of come away as the guy is probably doesn't really know engineering that well. He's more of a salesperson. Supposedly he worked on some kind of luggage thing or something like that for the airlines or, or whatever before this. But uh, anyways, well, you know, he makes some good points, the, the British guy, that, look, you really just don't come out with stuff and tell people you're coming out with something that would be industry changing. Because they're talking about making this thing work for the automotive industry on top of just the boating industry, which is... The reason he said he's coming into the boating industry and making outboard is the least amount of regulations. Well, there are a lot of regulations on outboards, but I guess it's the least uh, entry to market, so to speak. But then again, your numbers are going to be small, too, compared to the automotive side. So, uh, hey, it would be interesting to see what they come out with. Uh, they did have one name that the, uh, the Alpha Dam people dropped, which was Mall, and that's a pretty important name there. Um, they are very good engineering firm and working with them but as the guy from England said look you know you can pay them to work with you and yeah they're working with you and they give you a feasibility study but you know just taking your money and saying yeah you work with them so uh, so that kind of explains that myself I kind of looking at it and thinking about what I know about engines I'm not gonna invest in it I'll keep an eye on it. unless I get more info they really haven't had a prototype and they haven't done um, they haven't done a prototype and they haven't done a uh, they've done a 30 horse prototype but they didn't even really show that and they really weren't too forthcoming about their uh, what their proprietary connecting rod was you know it's a secret you know it's, well, it's got a patent but uh, again if, if it is what I think it is there's nothing really new about it so and it would have been done before it's been tried before internal combustion engines over 100 years old so there's been a lot of things tried if you look it up there's some really strange engines out there so uh, anyways they want 500 minimum 20,000 max uh, again I was thinking about a thousand I myself I don't plan on investing in it I'm gonna keep an eye on it and keep up with it but uh, if you want to look at it and invest in it that, that's your own business remember if you're gonna invest in stuff uh, be prepared to lose the money if you're going to invest in it because they may never ever come out with an outboard. And my guess would be is they probably never will come out with an outboard. Uh, not in a 7.5 liter uh, four cylinder, inline four cylinder that's going to uh, run at 5,500 RPMs. You might get one that runs at 500 RPMs, but not 5,500. And you know, what would be the point to have a gas engine do that? Just go for, go for peace with it. Um, but anyways, you know, never know. Maybe they may have something up their sleeve, so we'll keep an eye on it, and uh, you know, may I'll do some updates if I learn some more info about this or not. If you know anything else about it, or some info I left out, or something I got wrong, let me know in the comments. And uh, you know, again, I appreciate you watching, having a nice time out here in the lake. It's summer. I'm not putting that many videos out because I'm out here on the lake. So that's why I put this video out on the lake. So, but I appreciate you watching, and. Uh, Again, like, subscribe, yada, 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 and uh, keep an eye out for the next video.